Hey, how's it going? It's been a little bit of a moment since I've made a video and I was popping in the kitchen to make myself some dandelion root tea and I thought, why not show you the process? Um, so, a lot of you might be familiar with um, roasted dandelion root or dandelions in general. She's definitely one of those plant allies that are like everywhere. In fact, she's like everywhere in the world. I think the only continent that she hasn't established herself on is like Antarctica and like things keep warming up, she'll probably be there soon enough. <laughs> Anyhow, so you might know, you know, like dandelion root tea as like a coffee replacer or as like a bitter, and she, she can definitely be those things, but I think a lot of people um, really overlook like how like awesome dandelion root is for um, really supporting things beyond digestion, and or maybe just like simplifying it by saying she just supports digestion. So I want to talk to you about like how to make her um, and what she's amazing for. So the first thing that you'll probably think to yourself is awesome. I've got some dandelion root tea bags in the cupboard. Throw them away. <laughs> you don't have to throw them away. I mean, use them up by all means. But the thing about roots, the thing about roots, let's, let's have a look at these roots, is that they are really, listen, what are those? Those are really hard. It's not like you're dropping like fluffy tea leaves that, you know, like raspberry leaf tea or something like that that has the capacity to like soften really easy in water. These are really, really hard roots. And if you're going out and harvesting your roots, anybody will tell you you want to chop these up yourself before you dry them or before you roast them, depending on what you're doing with them, because it's really hard on your um, like blender or your knife or yourself <laughs> in general to get these chopped into small pieces. And now I bring that up because do you know why, what makes it rigid like that? Like you could say, oh, it's a plant fiber, it's a this, but what it really comes down to is the cellular structure of a root, right? She's hard because her cellular structure is hard, right? So you have to boil the ever-loving shit out of this thing <laughs> to make those cellular membranes break open. And that's important because within the cellular membrane is where you're finding all of the herbal properties that we're after. It's where all the inulin, which is a really amazing um, starch, a non-digestive like kind of starch, that your gut bacteria need to thrive. Like they starve if you don't have inulin. If you're taking probiotics before you take prebiotics type of situation, um, this is a prebiotic, right? It feeds the probiotic. Um, but I digress. The reason why these tea bags are useless is because you're just gonna boil hot water over it. Or how do I say that correctly, brain? <laughs> you're just going to pour boiling hot water over it in a cup, right? You'd be like, oh, here we go, you know, made myself some morning tea. And you'll taste it, you'll get flavor for sure, but the thing is, flavor doesn't equate that we've gotten like what we need out of it, right? So you really, really, really have to boil dandelion root, root simmer her good. Do something that gives a long, prolonged exposure to heat to bust open that hard cellular structure. And one thing that I've really noticed, um, especially in like the health industry lately, you know, like all the like the healthy herbalism accounts, like with like, not herbalism accounts, God, my brain. <laughs> I'm glad you guys let me be human. But uh, like nutrition accounts are like, drinking my dandelion root tea and I'm like drinking kind of brown water in the morning because there's not really anything in there, right? But they like the idea that it's helping to support their liver function, helping to support gallbladder function, digestive health, stabilizing blood sugar, building blood by proxy, and helping you get more nutrition out of the food that you eat, which in theory is why she's a blood builder, right? Um, but again, off topic. So these bags, there's also not a whole lot in these bags. Let me show you something else. So I like to use a percolator. Um, if you don't have a percolator, you can also just simmer in like a little cook pot. I looked up, not because <laughs> I have all my pots hanging, right? So I'm going to show you how to actually make this. So these percolators, depends on the brand you get. The, I like working with the older ones. You can find them on Etsy, eBay, in your you know local thrift shop because they're usually made with stainless steel and not aluminum. Um, old camp ones, ceramic ones. Ceramic ones are better. The camp ones that you can buy at like Wally World, these days are typically aluminum and I would stay away from that. So this is your stem. Just throwing shit at you at this point. <laughs> this is your basket. And now I'm gonna show you something. This is about how much I add. There's no real rules here, people. I'm not weighing this out. I just kind of eye it 
you know, and I like mine rather strong, and uh, I'll get to that in a moment. But, so look, that's about how much I put in there. And, and this usually makes, up, I don't know, four and a half, maybe five cups max. I don't think I've ever gotten five cups out of this. Uh, but so about usually four cups, right? And then I'm just going to put that in there, basket over top, fill this with the water, and start percolating it. But give me a second. Now, the reason that I'm going to get it open. So if it takes that amount to make four cups of probably medium strength dandelion. How much do you think of that would need to go in your cup? Do you think, do you think, come on, I should have practiced this. <laughs> do you think that it might need to be more than like a scant handful of powder, right? This is gonna make about four cups. That's supposed to make one. But the thing to know about um, like pre-made tea bags and powdered herbs in general is that this has been sitting in a warehouse for a long time. And that when you start grinding up herbs, like if you're not grinding them yourself, what happens to these little granules is that there's more space to do, to like for oxidation to occur, right? Like every time you make something even smaller, the more air space it has, right? Like the more space that can come in contact with air and then it oxidizes. And then when that happens, you start losing the potency of your herb. It just drops really rapidly. Um, and even with roots, and roots are pretty good at holding um, their herbal properties because they're literally like the root cellar of a root of a plant. They're like meant to hold on to the starches, the sugars, you know, the acids, all the minerals and compounds that we're after. But when you grind them this tiny and this powdered um, so they can go into millions of commercial tea bags, you are losing a lot of that through oxidation, but also a lot of the grinding equipment that these industries use um, creates amount of heat. So it's even furthering the oxidation, right? Like, so, I mean, you can use these, there's something wrong with it, it's not going to kill you, but I just, I, I don't know that it drives me crazy so much as I just wanna like let everybody know that like, the cup of dandelion tea they're making in the morning with a tea bag and some hot water, I mean, it's okay, but it's not doing what you're thinking it's doing. You genuinely need a fair amount, a fair amount, a good amount. This would probably, if I ground this up, it would probably be the same amount, without showing the brand, it would probably be the same amount that it would take to put into all of these tea bags, right? Like this would fit all of these tea bags. And so when I tell people that, um, especially with herbs that aren't aromatic, meaning I mean, this has a smell when you roast it and you, when, you, when you boil it for sure, but it's not like chamomile, right? Like if it's not an aromatic, doesn't have high essential oil um, compounds like VOCs and stuff, you need more of it, right? If it's an aromatic, you can get away with just like, you know, a couple chamomile tea bags, and I usually use four though, um, in a cup, but not with something like a root that needs to be boiled. Okay, got that out of the way. <laughs> so like I jabbered rapidly about um, a little bit ago, dandelion root roasted and I like the roasted aspect because it does help open up that cellular membrane a little bit because you are breaking it down and so people would probably you know you're going to come at me with that as defense for using the tea bags however it's just step one it's still unless you've like roasted it to the point that it's like powdered you have not like fully gotten that out roasting you can do it yourself it takes maybe about like 30 minutes that is not long enough to like think that everything is completely accessible to us. So I'm going to fill my pot of water up. I think I got distracted. <laughs> so give me a second here. Um, all right. Probably should have done that before I started the video, but that's how professional I am. Um, <laughs> So dandelion is really amazing for um, digestive health, but why? Why is because she really helps break down the foods because she's a bitter. But what bitter does is it stimulates the gallbladder. And what the gallbladder does is it breaks down the food and the nutrients. And then what happens is we got this little tube that goes from your stomach, well, your stomach is here, to your liver, right? And it has a tube. Uh, it's just going to, it's, there's a scientific term. I don't care. <laughs> Anyhow that transfers nutrients from your gut to your liver. Your blood is constantly cir circulating through your liver every day, all day of your life. 
and then as the blood passes through your liver, people think it's a filter, it's getting rid of toxins. That's not really its main role. Its main role is to be like a passive inserter of nutrition into your blood. So when you drink dandelion root tea before and after a meal, what happens is, first of all, you'll digest your food better. You won't be as prone to like gas or bloating or you know diarrhea, anything like that. Second of all, all that food, you get way more like return for your eating effort, <laughs> right? Like you get more nutrition out of your food, which is really important because a lot of people don't realize that like the effort of eating food actually takes up to like 15% of the energy return that you would get from the food, right? And if you're not digesting well, it means that you're gonna have to eat more not to be malnourished and like, it's just like more and more energy expended, except for if you drink some dandelion tea, you're gonna get more of the energy back from your food because you'll have more of the energy from the food available and energy comes from the vitamins and minerals that are in our food. Well, and sugar too, your body really needs carbohydrates. <laughs> so, she's really amazing in that way, but also like when you support your liver function, every other system in your body is happy. And when you support your liver function, your skin is happier, and your heart is happier, and your digestive, and your mental health, and everything else is happier. Um, but she's also, and I'd be remiss, it's a big word I know, <laughs> not to mention that she also really has an impact on the kidneys. She's a mild diuretic. Some people um, will pee a lot more in the beginning when they start to work with her, but I noticed that the body tends to level out where you're like, oh man, this made me pee so much more today. Whereas you're drinking her over the next week, you start to pee a little bit less, and what that's usually doing is getting rid of excess water weight, right? If we don't have high quality salt on our diet, we tend to retain water. People are like, what? But that's just another topic. <laughs> um, and so when you start helping your kidneys get rid of that excess water, you start peeing a lot. But as things level out, maybe you're eating some like high quality like sea salt or something like that now, um, you'll start peeing less and less. In fact, usually when people are like, wow, a dandelion is like way too strong of a diuretic for me, I usually say you don't have enough salt in your body. You're pissing all the time because you have like a major water retention load. Now, some people are like, dandelion root tea will help you lose weight. No, she'll help you lose water weight, but that'll come right back if you don't make changes to your diets and like look at the, the mineral imbalances going on in your body, right? Um, but she is really great for our bladder infection. If you're prone to UTIs all the time, I had a freak kidney infection a while back and she really, really helped me. Um, so I'm going to get this simmering and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like and then we're gonna like legit make a cup of tea together, okay? So give me one second. Okay, so I brought it up to a boil. I'm, I'm an impatient person <laughs> sometimes, so I crank it up to high until it boils, and then I usually turn it down just below medium, and I let it steep like this for like 15, 20 minutes. Um, if you're new to dandelion tea and you're not accustomed to bitters, I would probably not go over 15 minutes for your first batch, um, and maybe put a little bit less in the top pot. Um, I can just made a ding sound. <laughs> So I'm just going to let this simmer for about 15 minutes. And I like this percolator because this is glass, but I can see um, how dark the brew is by looking at what's landing up there. So um, I'll be back shortly. Okay, so my tea is done. And um, it is like 2 million degrees in this house. Look how red my face is. I... <laughs> I've got windows open, fans going. It's cold outside, right? And we use a wood stove. And I just didn't realize I threw a pitchy piece of wood on there, meaning it has like a lot of sap and like pine sap and pitch inside of it. And when uh, firewood has that in it, it burns like extra hot. And so it went from like a pleasant like 70 degrees in here to like the um, wall thermometer says it's like 79. And for some reason, my body's like. <sighs> It's too much. <laughs> so a warm ass cup of tea should help that. Okay, so you've brewed your dandelion tea. Here's a little tip. If it's just you making this tea, if nobody else is drinking it with you and you want to have it for multiple days without having to make a batch over and over again, if you use a percolator, the really cool thing is the herbs, are, the roots and such are never actually in the water. So you can leave this as is without your brew getting too strong and bitter because believe me, if you leave dandelion, dandelion root sitting in the water, in your hot water or whatever long enough, it will get too bitter that you can't drink it. 
Um, <coughs> also, you can brew it kind of weak, and then the next day you can rebrew it and it'll get a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger, right? Um, I'll go like two or three days, you know, just warming it back up. So, cup, pot. <laughs> that is how we're going to proceed. Um, and I, don't, I do not have to show you how to pour hot liquid into a cup. That's not what this is about. I'm going to talk to you about things that I like to add. Um, but, of course, like a cup of tea is like as personal as what you want to wear, right? So, um, I like to add maple syrup to my dandelion tea. Just, just trust me. Maple syrup is an amazing source of vitamin Bs. It gives your liver that, like glucose that it needs to function your body needs sugar every cell in your body functions from carbohydrates and sugars you need sugar in your life um and i love maple syrup for that i'm not saying to go out and eat corn syrup you know i'm saying like get some little sugar back in your life start eating fruit again anyhow so i put some maple syrup in there and then i'll just put tea in there I like to add half and half to mine or sweet cream. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Almost messed up. Here's a tip. Um, you know, if you're working on getting healthy animal fats in your diet, but you don't eat nose to tail, you want more of that gelatin, and you want, like, all those really awesome amino acids and stuff that come from that, um, you can get, like, some organic grass-fed beef gelatin. And you want to make sure it's a high quality so it doesn't have, like, a flavor. I add just like a little smidge of beef gelatin to mine. You know, just like what you would make jello out of. Um, and you gotta do it in hot liquid so it dissolves because it makes it so creamy. It makes it really nice and creamy, especially if you're gonna add cream to it. And then, by the way, there's protein and carbohydrates. And when you add the cream, you could use coconut cream if you don't eat dairy. Just make sure it's not full of, like, nasty poopas. You know, a lot of those, they sneak that stuff in most of those non-dairy creamers. Um, and then you stir it up, and you've got protein, carbohydrates, and fats, and we'll little drink. I like to, when I wake up in the morning, especially in the wintertime, I will have a cup of roasted dandelion root tea before I eat anything. And I know that it's giving my body the energy that it really wants because I've been sleeping for, you know, seven, eight hours, and it needs something to, like, kickstart that liver. So I'm making sure that it's pretty balanced when I drink it. And it's hot in here. I want to take a drink anyways. I love it. It's like one of my favorites. Um, you can also use honey. You can use whatever you want. Um, and another tip is in the summertime. In the summertime, because you, you're like, I don't, like, if it's going to be as hot in here now as I am all red-faced and shit, because <laughs> how hot it is, you're like, I want to drink dandelion tea, but it's like, by 6 a.m. it's already like 90 degrees out. I live in high mountain desert, so that's a fact. <laughs> um, what you do is you make this pot of tea and you let it cool down, and it's delicious iced. I love it. I'll even drink it in the wintertime. Like in the morning I have this, and then I'll fill up like a thermos so it stays cold, but like I'll pour it over ice with the maple syrup. I, at that point, can't add the gelatin, so I usually add um, like collagen instead, just because um, collagen has a lot of the same properties as... Um, beef gelatin does except for it just dissolves at any temperature it doesn't have to be hot and I will tell you if you do add beef gelatin to yours um, finish the cup or dump it out right away because if not you'll come back and it will literally be jello in your cup because <laughs> it'll turn into like a big ass gummy if you don't if you don't pour that out um, but you know dandelion tea it's really accessible a lot of people are like okay but show me how to go out and harvest it and I'll definitely do that um, come fall because you want to dig your, most of your roots in the fall not in the spring um, but, you know, I use so much of this that unless I start a dandelion farm, uh, I'm not going to be able to realistically harvest enough that I can have a cup every single day, right? Like, I will go through this jar in probably, I don't know, a month and a half, two months max, and there's a lot of months in winter, <laughs> you know? And so that would be a lot, a lot of digging. If I had to guess, like, some sort of weird jelly bean guess game in the jar... There, there's probably, I don't know, I want to say there's at least like 200 dandelions worth of roots in here. I know that sounds crazy, but it's chopped up real small. So I buy it in bulk, and you want to get it roasted. Be mindful because they sell it unroasted too, and that will not taste the same. Roasted is the key here. Um, 
I guess you could probably roast it yourself. I mean, you could if that's all you could find, but like save yourself some time. It's the same cost. I typically buy it by the pound because it's cheaper that way. Um, you can check basically any bulk herb supplier carries it. So just, you know, just Google, um, you know, bulk roasted dandelion root and you'll find an option will pop up and definitely shop around because some places will really hike that price up. And like I've seen one place, I won't mention the name because <laughs> I've seen one place, they charge like $30 for a pound. I'm like, are you kidding me? And then another place I could get like two pounds or more for that cost. So make sure that you don't go with the like, suggested paid for results scroll a few ways <laughs> check out a few different providers um, and, and look around to find it um, but again we'll go over the fact that it's great for digestive health and it does help um, regulate blood sugar it's going to help build blood um, it helps stimulate liver functions energy gets more nutrition out of your food um, it's really good for kidney functions getting off water weight things like that but what about who can't drink this Right, of course, every body is different and we should make sure that we're doing um, a fair amount of research into any herb before we put it into our body because ultimately we're responsible for our choices. But also, I can tell you that if you have gallbladder issues and you have to stay away from bitter foods, dandelion's not the one for you. Um, some people who are allergic to latex, like natural latex, have issues with dandelion root tea. So <laughs> don't like kill yourself if you have a latex allergy because remember dandelion is a latex bearing plant, meaning you can cut it, you know, you break that root and white goo comes out, that's latex, right? Um, also, if you have a gallbladder blockage, which is like, you might not know you have one, but most people end up knowing they have one. And the reason that's a problem is because you're drinking something that's going to stimulate your gallbladder and there's a blockage, <laughs> right? So that's not good. And of course, like if you've got, most of the warnings are like kind of common sense. Like if you've got like a bowel blockage, maybe don't drink it, but maybe you can't be drinking anything if your bowel is blocked. You should be in the hospital <laughs> getting that taken care of. Um, speaking of bowels, because let's not forget that part, this might make you poop. <laughs> because she is a digestive bitter, it's not going to make you violently shit yourself. Um, most people won't be cursing me <laughs> over drinking a cup and seeing what happens. Um, but it can help you be more regular. Um, and if things are backed up, it might help and there might be a bit of a floodgate situation, but that needed to happen regardless. And if you keep on top of it, um, she's not really going to like flush you out like coffee on an empty stomach, which you shouldn't be drinking anyways, will do. Um, anyhow, so that is basically who really should be avoiding it or doing more research into it. Um, don't feel shame if you have the tea bags like I went and bought specifically to make for this video use them up but then like save yourself a bunch of money and make yourself something that's a lot more like viable um, and just like it's by its potency right it has the capacity to support you so much better and the last thing that you need to know is that you are absolutely smart enough to do this how hard was that I mean you don't have to have a percolator you don't have to like have all the you know the gelatin and stuff to add that was just something that I like to add um, but you can definitely just boil simmer a little pot of water and put it through a strainer anything like that to get you a nice cup of tea if you are using a pot remember don't let your roots set in that water unless you plan on drinking it all in a day. And even if you're drinking it throughout the day, I would suggest taking the roots out because it can get too bitter to enjoy. Um, start slow. If you've never had dandelion root tea before, um, simmer it lightly and then work your way up the bitterness scale. You'll, your taste buds will wake up to it. And it, Like if you drank my cup where I brew it really strong, you'd be like, eh, that's all. <laughs> It doesn't taste bad. It's very earthy, very nutty. Um, definitely has like some hidden, like almost like caramel and like um, like nutty tones to it. Um, I, I really like it, but you have to start slow and work your way up. If you're trying to get off of coffee, um, one really good thing is to like make half and half. Start adding some roots into your coffee and your however you're making it. Um, and then just slowly take the coffee away while you add more dandelion root, right? So you don't have to go through like the hardcore um, uh, shock from taking caffeine out of your body while your adrenals learn how to function again <laughs> on their own. So, but yeah, you are definitely smart enough to do this, right? Right? And it will help you feel better and it will just be a nice routine to get in place. So if you like my random videos where I jabber, where I bounce about, where I forget about things, where my face gets real heavy, 
like red from the fire. <laughs> Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications. All these things help you see me. It helps other people find me. All that kind of stuff helps me know I'm not alone here in the void. Um, and if you're watching me on YouTube, come check me out on Instagram. If you're watching me on Instagram, come check me out on YouTube. I share all kinds of different stuff on both platforms, you know. Um, but yeah, that's that's Danny Langer Keith. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.